We're going to take a look at a case study from the space industry, as it represents a near-perfect example of what it means to rock the ship. That's to say, how a startup can come from an outside an industry with no prior experience and manage to not only enter it, but to even define that industry's future. And it's current. It's happening even as we record this case study. It's actually difficult to imagine a harder, more protected B2B, and in fact B2G example to show what can be achieved when a business model is created from a customer-centric perspective and in understanding the vulnerabilities of the incumbents. Now, here's the thing. If you want to really rock the ship, then you've got to do something differently. In fact, the most important element is to adopt something we call the nightmare competitor approach, a provocative, probing and progressive methodology which we develop for creating nightmare competitor business models with our clients. To be clear, a nightmare competitor is one which has a crystal clear focus and devotes all of their energy to achieving their goals. They operate in a world without boundaries, bureaucracy or bullshit as they deprive the established players of their customers. This case study will lead us through the four steps of the nightmare competitor approach. So let's imagine it's early 2002, you're sitting in California, you're on the newly formed SpaceX team and plan to become the nightmare competitor of the space industry. To start, you describe the customer base of the established, which you and the rest of the SpaceX team have no problem identifying as the B2G business dominates the attention of the established. The entire industry is structured around serving the government needs, whereas the B2B element of the industry uh, it's considered more of an add-on and has to fall in line with whatever the established are doing. However, it is being served and, therefore, you decide to describe them as serving everybody. Next, you and the team create a profile of the established by describing the paradigms that characterise their business model using a tool that is central to the nightmare competitor approach, the business model radar. And this is the profile of the space industry you created. You've heard the established referring to their heritage that has long been described as serving the national interest. In doing so, they can and do point to their track record and use of space-grade equipment to fulfil their contractual obligations. Not unlike the car industry, their role is that of an orchestrator where design is undertaken in-house, but the lion's share of production is outsourced and later assembled on site. Naturally, for such a protected niche industry, relationship management is key to securing such high-value contracts and maintaining the regulatory barriers to prevent newcomers from entering the game. Not unlike the orchestral production role, the method of launches is also a consortium approach where multiple parties have key responsibilities. And when recalling the national interest foundations of the industry, government R&D funding has been a key aspect of developing technologies over the decades. Notwithstanding, however, the established work on the basis of a price per launch. And to complete the profile of the business model for the established, you simply need to connect the dots. And there you have it. So next you switch focus to the new realm. As the wannabe nightmare competitor, you first identify which customers are not being perfectly served by the established. You've already observed that the NASA budget has plateaued whilst an increasing number of clients outside the government realm have a demand to launch more satellites into space as the transition to the information age starts to accelerate exponentially. Therefore, it makes sense to focus exclusively on the commercial customers without compromise. Next is where the magic happens. With the newly defined customer in mind, you define your core offering, which, simply stated, is moving material into space at the lowest cost conceivable. Therefore, your core offering is low price. Now, with that clearly identified, it's important to then question which of the paradigms of the established are really necessary for your new type of customers. It's clear that serving the national interest is not a high priority, and given that you're a startup from outside the space industry, you don't have an exhaustive track record. Naturally, you're required to use space-grade equipment, but with your deep-seated desire to minimise costs, you plan to lessen these expensive and prohibitive mandates. We'll talk more about that a little later. And still with your cost reduction focus, you plan to manufacture far more of your rockets in-house, but in the early years at least, we'll have to rely on third-party suppliers and therefore also as an orchestrator, but to a lesser extent than the established. Focusing on the newly defined target customer group means that the classic B2G relationship management is of far less importance for you. It's not about schmoozing and networking to influence contracts and maintain high entry barriers. It's about reducing prices and opening up the marketplace. However, 
as is your plan for manufacturing, reliance on external parties will be far less than compared to the established. And as for R&D funding, well, that's simply not a topic. Here we're talking about B2B business. It's about price per launch, and unlike the established, you are seeking to significantly reduce the cost of each launch. Now you've seen what can be eliminated, you move swiftly to the creation of your new paradigms, the paradigms of the nightmare competitor. In addition to lowering prices, you understand that the frequency of launches is another critically important dimension so you can better serve your customers. And one of the ways of achieving this is by giving careful thought for every design decision so as to make the cost of manufacturing as low as possible. Designing modular rockets will be one of the key ways of achieving this. Simplicity is king. In addition, a point you've touched already is in-house manufacturing. In direct contrast to the established, you plan to manufacture or assemble over 50% in-house rather than be at the mercy of third-party suppliers. Of course, these manufacturing and design philosophies will lead to a level of agility that is unheard of in the traditional space industry. Now, one of the most visionary technical aspirations you and the team have, which would really epitomise rocking the ship, is to produce reusable rockets. Achieving this would mean that your rockets can be checked, refuelled, loaded with new cargo and sent back to space in almost no time. This, of course, should translate into reducing the cost of launching satellites by a factor of 10 or more. Now, coming back to the space-grade parts we touched earlier, you and the team see clear opportunities to make use of more readily available equipment and in doing so can save more time and reduce cost. And finally, you come to the subject of integrity. You see, as you sit together with the team, you're reminded of the audacious vision and dream for SpaceX. The dream is otherworldly, extraterrestrial in fact. It's the human colonization of Mars, as your aspiration is to go beyond sending satellites into orbit or astronauts to the International Space Station, as you see the chance to move the world into a situation whereby mankind becomes multiplanetary. And that's the point. Everything you and the team will do is with this dream in mind. No compromises. In fact, all of the nightmarish paradigms you've just written down speak directly to your core offering, lowering the price of spaceflight. In doing so, you can dramatically accelerate progress and bring that audacious dream closer to reality. And as you connect the dots to complete your profile, that of the nightmare competitor, you see with absolute clarity how you will bring the established out of balance, i.e. where their perceived strengths will be turned into liabilities, rendering them helpless. So what lessons can be learned here? Well, there are three very real lessons that apply to any industry and are not in any way exclusive to the space industry. And each of them can be addressed directly by adopting the nightmare competitor approach. First, we can see clearly that it's worthwhile to take a close look at a nightmare competitor like SpaceX at an early stage. In this case, the space industry seemed not to believe that a startup from outside the industry could succeed in their market. By adopting and applying the methodology, the sincerity and potential would have been plain to see. Secondly, the tool allows you to see the full potential of your nightmare competitors, even when your nightmare competitor is already out there. Only by looking through the lens of your nightmare competitor have you attained intellectual leadership which empowers you to intelligently utilise these new ideas and insights. And finally, somebody will always become the nightmare competitor of the nightmare competitor. Isn't that the very tenet of rocking the ship? We've all seen examples of companies who disrupted or even created industries. But there's always another nightmare competitor just around the corner, and rarely do they come from within the established. The nightmare competitor approach enables you to be bold and fast. It's designed to empower you to rock the ship in your world and even define the future of your industry. And with that said, we appreciate your time and invite you to get in touch with us if you're interested to rock your ship. It is provocative. It is probing. And on that basis, it's not for everyone. But it's also playful and progressive. If it's for you, you'll know.